Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of uh, Bash Plays. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Victory at Seas and do a how to play video on it. Uh, we'll just run through the basics, not too many special rules, because um, it's just the demo set that we've got. But hopefully by the end of the video, you'll understand how a turn works, the different turn sequences, and the uh, basic mechanics of it. Let's right. get, get down to the table. As you can see, we have two small fleets set up here. We have the Imperial Japanese Navy and the United States Navy over here. We're just going to do a quick overview of the game turn to start with. Um, so each, each turn of the game has four distinct phases. Start off, we have the initiative phase, then the movement phase, the gunnery phase, and then the end phase. So the initiative phase is simply each player takes a D10. We roll it, whoever has the highest, in this case the United States, they get the initiative for the whole of this game turn. Um, what that means is basically the initiative, whoever has holds the initiative, they get to move a ship first and shoot a ship first, essentially. But it's alternating activations, so there's a little bit of benefit to winning the initiative, but it's not game breaking. So onto the movement phase. Let's imagine now that because the United States did win the initiative, this Fletcher class destroyer is going to move. When moving, every ship has to activate. You can't say it's not moving unless if it is disabled. Um, so you have to move at least an inch. So you measure from the bridge. So that's the, the least we could move there. However, to turn up to 45 degrees, you need to move two inches. So that's moved another inch. Then let's say we want to turn a little bit. You align with the bridge there, and then you simply just turn up to 45 degrees. So we'll turn to that angle there. That is one ship moved onto the Japanese. They would then activate a ship. The United States will activate their last one and then so on and so forth until all models are activated. However, in larger games, some fleets may have more models than the other. If it comes to the point where your opponent has no models left to activate, you simply just activate all of your models, all of your ships and move them all. Next phase, we're going to move on to the gunnery phase. This phase is set, is split into four separate parts of um, the process of how to fire. So first off, we nominate targets for every weapon system that will fire. We check the firing arc and range for each weapon system on that ship. We resolve the firing and then we resolve the damage. So for this example, we're going to activate this Northampton class heavy cruiser and we are going to target the Megami class heavy cruiser. So we choose the weapon systems we wish to fire and we wish to fire the all three main turrets and it's light guns. So to start with we measure the range. The range is just under 12 inches, so that means we know all of the weapon systems we wish to fire are eligible. So, first off, we'll take the, as we look at the Northampton class card, we can see that each turret has three AD, which is attack dice, which means that for every weapon system of that kind, we roll three dice. When rolling the attack dice, we're looking for a result of four or more. You then look at the attack modifiers and um, like modify the dice as necessary. So as you can see from this, we are at short range, which means there is no modifier, which means every hit of four plus, every roll of four plus will be a hit. So we've got four hits. When you've hit, you then roll the the damage dice, which is indicated by the DD on the card. Every hit rolls one damage dice. When rolling the damage dice, you need to equal or beat the armor of the uh, target using the modifier on the weapon card. As you can see, these turrets have zero modifier, which means that we need to beat the Megami's armor class of three plus. So every hit, we roll a dice, and we've done three damage. When rolling damage dice, 
any roll of a natural six, then has to check again to see if it was a critical hit. We roll another dice, and if that dice is four plus, it means it was a critical damage. You then roll a d10 on the critical damage chart and see what happens. So we did three points of damage. So we just mark that on the Megami class. So that's gone from 30 down to 27. We then have the light guns, which is at 15 inches. Sorry, 15 inches is extreme. So that means this weapon system has six dice, but we are at long range for this weapon system. So that means it's plus, it's minus one to the dice. So that means we need fives and sixes to hit. My dice rolling is as great as ever, and we've missed all six hits. So don't need to show any damage from that. That essentially is a quick overview of um, a shooting phase, a gunnery phase. What would happen is every then ship then activates and you then move on to the end phase. The end phase is damage uh, control and then check for escalation. Damage control means you can choose one critical hit area and see if you can repair it. So nobody's been hit yet. And the escalation is certain parts on the critical hit table have escalation and that just means potentially it can just go up one level. There you have it, we've had a quick run through of all the different phases, so let's have one game turn and let's move and attack with all ships. So starting with initiative, the Japanese player rolls a 10 and the United States player rolls a 1. So that means the, the Japanese have initiative and they get to activate first. So they're going to choose to activate their Fubuki class destroyer, which has a flank speed of seven. So he is going to choose to move three inches to there. He then wishes to turn. He's going to do a, another two inches. So, so far, he has moved five inches, and he's got two left, so he is going to move it. And he's going to choose to move to there. That's that model activated. And now the Americans get to activate. So, they're going to choose to activate their Fletcher class destroyer. Nobody wants to activate their cruisers yet, see what the other ones are doing. So he's going to simply move seven inches forward, and then turn. So, we'll use this one from Black Seas. He's going to go the whole seven and do I want to turn? You know, he'll, he's happy to stay there. Japanese player next. He's going to activate their Megami class heavy cruiser which has a speed of seven so start with on the bridge he'll go two inches, allowing him then to turn. And you see, we're allowed to turn up to that angle. We've got four inches remaining. And we will turn again. So we align the bridge. Actually, I want to go that way, sorry. Align the bridge, and we'll turn the whole 45 degrees. That is the Megami class done. Then the last one is the Northampton class cruiser. This has a movement speed, a flank speed of six. So 
has to move at least an inch because we imagine it did move previously. So this is the inertia essentially. He's gone three inches. No line that there. And turn again. We're happy with that. He'll stay there. Next, onto the gunnery phase. So we choose a ship. We're going to activate the Megami class. Then you see, we'll bring up the card again, and it has all of its main turrets in range. So we will check the range to the other cruiser. It's just under ten inches. So that means it's under short. So it's got five turrets. Each turret has two attack dice. So we are looking for fours because it's within short range. So there's no modifier. However, if we look at the attack modifiers, the large silhouette, you are in the target's port or starboard arc, most definitely. So it actually means we're hitting on a 3+. plus. So we will take the misses out. That's some good shooting by the Japanese there. So we have three, that's six hits. We then move on to the damage dice. So each one of these turrets has one damage dice per hit which means we then have to beat the armour. The armour is 2+, plus, so any roll of 1 will sadly miss. And you see, we have 3 normal successes and potentially 3 criticals. So for the 3 criticals, we'll see if they, if they are all critical hits. So that's 6 points of damage to start with. Taking us straight down to 17. And then we have to roll 3d10. So the first d10 so the critical system is a two so that's the engine the next one is a crew and the next one is an engine so it's two engine hits and a crew hit already the northampton class is in a bad way so as we look onto the critical hit chart the First engine damage is propeller damage, which is minus one to its flank speed. The second of its hit is then rudder damage, which means must move three inches before each turn, as well as an extra damage. We also got a crew, so the first crew hit is minus one attack dice. So we have to roll a, another d6 to see what the critical damage is. So a 1 is attack dice are lost from all light gun weapon systems. So that means the Northampton class has lost its light guns. Finally, the Megami will fire its light guns. So it is at range 10. So that means it's going to be a long range. So this is 8 dice. And this is needing, so it's minus one for the long range, but then plus one for the Star Wars. So it's back down to a four. So we're looking for fours. So some good shooting still by the Japanese there. And then we will check damage dice for this. So again, we're looking for two plus. However, the armor of this the eighth armor penetration is minus two. So that essentially means we're looking for four pluses. So two hits. The six means potentially a critical. So yes, we've got a critical in. So that's two points of damage. And the critical is an eight. So that's another crew hit. Northampton is taking an absolute pound in here. There's two points of damage. And we look at the next crew area is an extra damage taking us down to 13 and it's escalation so escalation means in the end phase we have to roll to see if essentially if the fire spreads so northampton class is looking very beat up there so americans get to activate they're going to choose to activate the fletcher class destroyer to see if they can do some damage to 
the Japanese destroyer before it fires. So to start with, we're going to measure the light guns and see what the range is. So it's just over seven inches. So the light guns for short range is nine, so we know we are within short range. So this is five, sorry, three attack dice. And we're looking for, it'll be fours, however, the target is a destroyer, so that means we're looking for fives, and it did move more than six inches, so that is minus one again, so we're actually looking for sixes here, it's going to be quite hard for the Americans, but we get one, so that's one hit on the Japanese destroyer, and then we see if we do any damage. So the armor value is one plus. However, the light guns have a minus two. So this means we're looking for a three plus hit. So that's a point of damage to the Japanese destroyer. Uh, so Japanese next. The Japanese will activate their Fubuki class destroyer. They are gonna see if they can fire over here. We're feeling brave. They're gonna see if they can just over 11 inches, which means we are out of shore range. However, it's three attack dice. So it's fours, minus one for long range. Um, yep, so looking for fives. Two hits, the <laughs> Japanese are Doing very well here. So it's two hits. Each dice, uh, so it's minus two. So however, we're looking for fours to do damage. No, no damage cause. The last gunnery phase will be the Fletcher class, and this is going to shoot at. You know what? We may split the weapons here. May split. Because the Megami is very hard. I don't think we're going to destroy that. Let's see if the light. So, we're going to fire the light guns at the destroyer and his three turrets back into the cruiser. So, cruiser first is nine dice using fire and hole three. We are looking for, it's within short range. So, there's no, so threes because it's a large silhouette because it's in the port of well, starboard. So looking for threes. Oof, that was a good hit. So each one of these is then trying to beat the armor value of three plus. So the, the Japanese have good armor here. So can we get any sixes? Excellent, so potentially two criticals, they missed. So it's five points of damage. And two checks for criticals. One was a critical. Let's see what this was. There's a one. Which is an engine. So, minus one to its flank speed. And nothing else, so that is it. So, we're now gonna fire the light guns into the Megami as well. So the range is just under 10. So this is classes long range at least. So it's minus one for long range, but plus one for large silhouette. So we're hitting back on fours. Five hits. We then have to do the damage. So the armor is three plus, but the armor penetration of this is minus two. So we're looking for fives. No hits, nothing. No damage done. So that is the end of the gunnery phase, and we move on to the end phase. So we do have some damage control to do. So the Japanese are going to try and fix their engine room damage. So on a roll of uh, four plus on a d6, we re remove one critical hit location to a minimum of zero. So that has, so 
successful. And the, the US are going to try and fix their crew problem, because if we don't put this out, uh, essentially we're going to have to check for escalation, so bad things happen for that. So no, so the US fail, which then means that a 4 plus on the escalation of the crew area, it escalates, and yep, so that then means we gain another critical, essentially, and we then have to immediately apply step three. So we're now on multiple fires, so it's two extra damage, taking us down to 11, and weapon area critical score increases by one. So we then go to weapon area, which hadn't actually been hit initially. So that's weapon area one, which is extra damage of one, taking us down to 10 points of damage. And the penalty for that is minus one attack dice. So each time, so one is already done, roll again, four. So that means there's no AA batteries or light guns on the Northampton class every cruiser. And I forgot because I fired the light guns earlier. However, maybe that's why they missed because they weren't really there. So that's the end of a whole turn. We then essentially remove any mess from the table and go for turn two. There you go guys, it's a, a quick overview and demo of Victory at Sea by Warlord Games. Hopefully it gives you a rough idea of how the game plays and what to expect. Um, the movement of it is quite simple, I would argue, um, but it really comes into its own during the gunnery phase. You've seen there's a lot of potential for critical hits that just keep going, damaging other systems, which as you can imagine would happen um, if you hit some of them areas on a, a destroyer and cruiser, even the battleships, that can, some of them can be very devastating. Um, so yeah, it's I like how they've, there's easy areas of the game and then they've just put a lot of the meat and bones essentially as the gunnery phase of the, the whole system. Um, there we have it. Look forward to the next instalment of this series where we will be playing a full game. And well, I say a full game, it'll be four ships aside. Uh, we'll try the War at Sea uh, scenario. So, cheers, guys. Just like, comment, subscribe, and let us know below um, what you would like to see next uh, for Victory at Seas. Uh, what you, if you want us to paint up British or German instead, or can, uh, carry on expanding the Japanese and American fleets. Cheers guys, thank you very much.